Washington State. Sasquatch stories abound. And the people have all but accepted Bigfoot as their mascot. But could the dense forests of the Evergreen State hold the key to proving the existence of this hairy hominid? One group answers the call, the Olympic Project. A team of dedicated Sasquatch researchers stumbled upon some possibly compelling evidence of the species with implications of intelligence that are startling. It begs the question, what exactly are they and just what are in those mountains? So here we go. It is about 6.10 in the morning here in Boston, East Coast time. About to soon get on a plane to Seattle and then be in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. So. So I'm here with my boy Petikov filming the next episode of the Pen Petikov Chronicles. For small town that's monsters. What we're it. Wow, so here we are. We're in Washington State. We can see Mount Rainier right there. We're heading there right now. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Dude, it's sick. There's just so many trees. There's clouds in the sky. I don't know. Very different from Southern California. Yeah, flying in, I had a good chance to see um, Mount Rainier also and the Cascades. And what's really crazy is you think about you know, Washington State for Bigfoot, you got the Cascades, which is a hot spot. I mean, Harry and the Hendersons, they still have some of the, like the Bigfoot Museum in that area. That whole area is a Bigfoot hotspot. Yeah. And then on the other side, the Olympic Peninsula, where we're gonna be at. It's like everywhere you go in this state, there's just an insane amount of sightings and, and history, actually. So I got here the Mega Bigfoot Coffee from Bigfoot Java. The flavor is extreme. I think it's Bigfoot Extreme Chocolate or something like that. It's got five shots of espresso in there. This guy's so, gonna be, his hands are gonna be like shaking. Yes, I'm gonna chug this all before I meet Seth Breedlove for the first time. <laughs> Located southeast of Seattle, Mount Rainier towers at just over 14,000 feet, making it the tallest mountain in the state of Washington and the Cascade Volcanic Range. The mountain is an active stratovolcano, and centuries of small lava flows have built up over time, giving it its unique appearance. Glaciers on the side of Rainier provide water for the many rivers and streams that stretch out from the mountain. With an appearance in the 1987 film Harry and the Hendersons, Mount Rainier and the surrounding Cascades are no stranger to the Sasquatch mythos. Covering dozens of miles in any direction one looks, the Cascades are just one place Sasquatch can hide in the state of Washington. Another region contending with the Cascades in both remoteness and potential suitable habitat for Sasquatch is the Olympic Peninsula. 
With eastern slopes that rise dramatically out of the Puget Sound, it is hard not to feel a sense of mystery while looking at the Olympics from a distance. Being in the mountains themselves, however, you can almost feel the weight of the legends that surround them. The natives tell of the Thunderbird that lives atop Mount Olympus, that had legendary battles with Mimlos the Whale. The battle shook the mountains and uprooted trees, leaving the prairies we find today. For early explorers, expeditions into the interior of the Olympics proved to be more than difficult, with many of the teams disbanding or quitting before attaining their goal, only adding to the mystique and a sense of forbiddenness to the mountains. The mountain range was formed over thousands of years of advancing and retreating continental glaciers, which formed the distinct valleys and steep mountainsides, making on-foot navigation almost impossible. It is in these mountains that the Olympic project came to be. Formed in 2009 by Derek Randalls, with an aim of being a truly scientific endeavor into the Sasquatch phenomenon, the group has grown, bringing in new people, each with their own unique skills and abilities. For our first night in the Olympics, Eli and I would rendezvous with several of the group members that would lead us to the infamous nest site. All right, so we are now heading into an area with Shane and the Olympic Project members. It's starting to rain. I mean, this is like the typical Pacific Northwest weather. Serving as our guides for the next few days were core members Shane Corson, Todd Hale, Rebecca Slick, and Chris Spencer. Dude. Yeah. All right, guys, so we're, we're out here, middle of the woods. I was just wondering kind of if you could talk a little bit about the significance of this location, you know, where we're at right now, what's, what's going on. Well, it's a significant area because of the amount of evidence and stuff we've collected over the years and the people involved in this. Obviously this area was discovered by a timber surveyor back in 2016 that came across these ground nests that in his you know, 27 plus years uh, over multiple states had never seen anything like what he discovered. So yeah, having been led to this area and, and subsequently finding more nests, uh, up to 24 nests spread out through this area, it's a really unique area between like what we've discovered over the years. Uh, and, uh, in fact, just last year, a newer nest. Uh, when you compile all the evidence, I mean, the hair samples, hand casts, foot impressions, uh, the nests themselves, the nests themselves, I think, I think literally speak for themselves. And mm. we are not far from the original nest now, right over here. Right. We're very close. And this is the first time you guys have ever camped in this area? down here yeah right usually we camp on the outskirts of this area several hundred yards away and now we're right in the thick of things i mean we're right down here first time ever we designed it this way and probably maybe down the road keep doing this sort of camping experience down here we usually try to stay out of this area we we try to not make a big imprint but now we're kind of shifting gears we're trying to you know we're always experimenting and this is going to be something kind of unique and different down the road and you know you guys are here now and we're doing it so See what happens. Yeah, so on that note, we we're talking about it earlier off camera about when you guys found something making one of these nests, like the craziest experience, I guess. You guys care to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, Todd. <laughs> well, we were heading into an area that Shane and Derek had found like, what, two weeks prior or something? Well, we decided Some to go in there, yeah. Really, yeah. really old nests. You know, a couple thousand feet away from here. Not miles, feet. So we were walking in there. We get to the ridge line. Right when we get to the edge of the ridge line where it starts to slope down to the creek, I slipped on a log and I fell. And I think the noise of me falling is what triggered this 
animal to retreat. We're going through this off trail. We came upon something. I think it hurt us because right when that went on, Shane said, you hear that? You hear that? Something's over there? Yeah. You know, it was really clear. Something large was busting through the brush up ahead of us and just heading down the ridge. Big breaking branches. We both drew our weapons. It went from straight in front of us down to the left. We deal with a lot of animals out in these areas, bear, cougar and stuff, especially the black bear out here. Black bear will usually just peel away. They see you, they smell you, they take off running. If you get close enough, they still do the same thing. Over and over again, they run away, they run away. Well, we encountered that back in the tail end of February. We encountered something that uh, approached us, then retreated, and then circled around behind us. That's not black bear behavior. It could be circling us. There's something over the crack. I heard something right here. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm not even sure that it was one creature. I'm still thinking it could have been two. There was one here in the beginning, there's one here now. And it's a long ways for it to go. So we're like, what do you want to do? I just want, I don't want to come up behind us. Let's That's just, why I keep looking right here. Let's get back up by that tree. You don't want to move forward to it? You want to? I, thought, I just don't want it to circle behind us. I thought we were going to keep moving forward. We got two guns. We headed that way and we came to a wall of huckleberry with like a bear tunnel we decided to go back to where we heard the original noise, came upon this wide trail, well used, mm. smashed down trail, about three feet wide. And you could tell something's been moving through there, heavy, repeatedly. And we started coming up the rise, the sun was out, and that's when you could see all the broken huckleberry tips. Mm. Yeah, the sun hit it perfectly. You could just see Because when you break the huckleberry, it's white. And you could just see white, 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 just broken, 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 like from right to left. And that's that's when we knew. Todd and I walked in on something, literally uh, constructing a nest. And we disturbed it. To me, that was a bad spot possibly to be in. And uh, it's getting dark. And I'm like, we need to make it back to camp. I said, let's, let's, it's, the huckleberry is not going anywhere. These breaks aren't going anywhere. This stuff's going to be here tomorrow. Let's come back out here tomorrow and investigate it. And we did. We brought Derek back out there. Derek, look at the bed. Look, that's a bed. Yeah. That is a f bed. <laughs> look at how much traffic has been right here. This yeah. area's mashed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, that's what we said on the trail coming in. We're like, holy sh. Oh, my God. Don't Ooh. worry, we did it. You guys scared me. I'm excited. This is what we've been looking Derek. for for four years. Derek and I, two weeks prior to finding this, had come across maybe possible older nests in this area. And now Todd and I, two weeks later, came across something making a nest in this area. It was like winning the lottery for me, personally. It, we, we always wanted to find a newer nest. We didn't know we would maybe walk in on something making a nest like that new. There's a lot of things that, you know, when you're involved in this research, it's mainly bland and lame and, and boring. Um, but if, if you really get out in the woods and spend a lot of time and in, in areas of interest, which we do spend a lot of time in, sometimes you strike gold. How'd you sleep last night? Slept well. The next morning we were joined by Seth Breedlove and the rest of the Small Town Monsters crew to see the nests themselves. All right, so we found a potential possible track. I mean, it's hard to say, but Shane and the guys are in here right now, so coming in, we're, we might we might cast it, so let's see. All right, so what do you guys think? I think it's a Bigfoot track. Shane thinks like I hoaxed it. No. <laughs> found it when you were coming to take a winkle, right? Yeah, I was taking, I was taking a little winky in the... <laughs> no. Logically, if a seven foot creature steps here, it's going to have to step up here next, and there would be. Or move sideways. Yeah, oh, yeah. What about the brakes? Where, where there's like there's a couple old brakes, nothing big. Yeah, there, those there's are old brakes. There's break there, but. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm leaning towards no. Yeah. yeah. Shane's 
going to rain on my parade today. There you have it. At least now it's kind of nice to find out one way or another. It seemed like it was pretty, pretty undefined. So yeah, it's kind of cool, you know, gets the excitement up, but it's nice when you're with experienced people like Shane and kind of point out either way. So Eli got his mixing bucket already. You want to show us that? Yeah, so this comes from the forest floor. My good friend Emily. And you just pop it open. It's transportable so you can mix your plaster in there. That is so convenient because, I mean, yeah. think about having to mix the plaster in like a bag or something. Usually it's kind of difficult. So that yeah. that's like you have so much space to work there with spills and everything. Right, and then the best part, you know, when you're done with it, you just... Been on this hike up and down up and down more times than I can count more times than I care for and I'm probably gonna do it a couple more times today alright so this is this here is one of the original nests we we're just talking to Shane and the and uh, Chris and some of the OP members and they're telling us about you know how it was discovered and everything but it's pretty deteriorated apparently from what it was. But a lot of the original ones were found right here, kind of around trees and uh, I'm gonna demonstrate this. If I was laying here, I could see, you know, your, I don't know how you'd, <laughs> how Sasquatch would lay, but I mean, this is kind of the rough idea and there's like a little crawl path almost right here. And I mean, subsequently this could have been used by other wildlife, but um, I don't know. It, it's not a stretch to say this is probably one of the most interesting Sasquatch related pieces of evidence, I think, of the 21st century. I, I came in here three years after the first time, and you could and still there, you know. see how the branches were woven. Yeah, they were definitely now, decaying, but, yeah. but even three years after yeah, they were noticeable, well, I was like, down, I was blown here. away. There's a finger over there, the big one that Derek was talking about, that's like six feet by eight feet. Wow. We went over to that. And there's no way you would think bear. I mean, just massive. And it's awesome. actually, it looks almost as if it was kind of dug out a little bit. So it kind of makes a bowl. And then you had all the huckleberry just woven around it. And just massive quantities of huckleberries. It's like, yeah. bears don't do that. What blows me away is, you know, like this guy, the surveyor or whatever, right? The person who found it coming across this. I mean, this is like insanely dif difficult yeah. to manage with even a trail, with yeah. somewhat of a trail. Yeah. So I yeah, mean, talk he, about luck. He, it was actually, yeah, total luck. I mean, he just was down here doing a job and, and I mean, could you imagine it? Perfect spot. Cause right. anything coming down that hill, they're gonna know right away. Exactly. And even up for that, man. Yeah. I mean, well, it's a straight shot down the creek and they can run whichever direction they want real quick. Because right now, we're on the finger. So the, the two nests, we, the old nests we just saw are up here. We're basically on a finger right here. I mean, there's a drop off and that goes right down the ravine as Shane was telling us. Salmon run comes through there, salmon spawning. So this is a perfect spot to just be hanging out, go down there, grab some salmon. So right here, mm -hmm. this was the point nest. The point nest. You guys stand. This is where the point nest was, where the rocks yeah. were. Where the rocks were. There was two rocks set off to the side that had score marks on it, like something had yeah. used them to knock them together. Shane's what? got them. All Whoa. this was clear though, so you had a. Yeah, this wasn't here. This was all. They could see anything coming up on them. Woven huckleberry right in here. Um, and you said Shane's no, got those? Uh, yeah, he's got the rocks. Are those I, think a, I think they're up it's at the uh, cabin. Oh, wow. Well. So. I would love to see those. Yeah. Well, you have to think about the, the nests that were built like years ago, you know, like 20 years ago, don't even exist anymore. Like, so never been found? Yeah, and they'll never be found because, <laughs> like, this is just after, what, six years? And it's hardly e existent anymore, you know? Like... Like we were just talking about on the way down here, like you and I both would just assume it's just like tree litter, like doesn't even look like anything, you know? That's and not the chance of finding it is just 
incredibly so small. small yeah as a It'll human coming through this area off. what motivation would you have coming through here it's like right. you want to find the path of least resistance you walk 10 feet into here and you're like screw this this is, is not worth the well, effort right. weird because the only guy that had the motivation to walk through here is the guy that discovered the nest which is the timber cruiser for yeah. the company mm -hmm. what would be the point of doing this otherwise well that and exactly. nobody wants to jump a bear in some of this stuff oh definitely. yeah because there are bears crawling around out here and there's a lot of cats out here yeah and yeah <laughs> are you guys you ever run into something like that, you know what to do? You probably do. Yeah, yeah. Basic. It's a little weird. I feel naked without a, my sidearm, but Washington. You don't mind if you're going to go down there? Like, I mean, uh, you yeah, if you, if you don't mind. Why the huckleberry? You know? Right. Is it just out of convenience, out of the, that there's a lot of huckleberry out here and they can eat that stuff? But why do we find piles of huckleberry leaves? I mean, all of the vines were completely stripped of huckleberry leaves. Yes, yeah, some of that, that, that ended up in the nest as a cushion, I believe. If you look at like great apes, for example, a lot, they get a lot of their water, actually not from like a stream or a creek. A lot of their water comes from leaves. That's actually where you get a lot of their water. I think there's something to the huckleberry. Do you know that they used to give, you know, and they still do in some cases, give women a mixture of huckleberry leaves and sugar for medicinal, for, wow. for, for uh, childbirth, after childbirth, to regain their strength. Yeah, right. We got a running theory that this is, you know, this particular area is a, somewhat of a, nursery or birthing area you know you got the nest right but why this area well there's a lot of reasons it's remote it's hard to get to there's an absolute ton of food sources in the huckleberry in this particular area because i think it's a little bit of a microclimate um you can you can see huckleberry all the way until february okay. well let yeah, me let me say this so i'm about six foot and you look at some of this huckleberry out here it's you know seven eight feet off the ground and a lot of something that's even bigger than that nine feet off the ground so for example yeah i can snap this right i can snap that that's what you would see you come across this area you know eight nine feet off the ground you find that right this is what the nests were made out of you know the huckleberry but then you come across stuff in the nest that were made out of like this thicker you know we got the top the, the huckleberry boughs but some of the you know portions of the nest were made out of this thicker stuff now this is about an inch for example, okay? And it's completely broken or snapped off. I mean, I mean, I don't care who you are right now. You're not gonna break that. I mean, this is, the nest would be made out of stuff like this, but then you grab a piece like this as well. I mean, look at this. I, I can't, I'm a, like I said, I'm a fairly strong guy. Uh, and then these boughs were pushed into the ground and the nest was formulated around that. So it's just, it's, it's took a lot of strength. No teeth marked, no claw marks on any of this stuff. As uh, Dr. Meldrum even stated, you know, took something with an opposable thumb. I mean, obviously, to, to yeah. do this stuff. I'm always amazed. I mean, here we got another one right here. This is a little bit more than an inch, and you would find breaks, and <laughs> and and then the nest formulator with this stuff. I mean, this is tremendous. Breaking that, I mean, it's just it's it's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. I can't do it. I don't think uh, I don't know anybody could without a, a tool. Yeah. But that would stuff would be snapped. You know, sometimes peeled. Sometimes you'd find it peeled. In some cases, you'd just find it's broken right in half. After joining the rest of the crew and seeing the nests, Aaron joined Todd, Eli, and I to visit the bottom of the ravine to gain a better sense of the terrain of the area. Oh, dude, that looks nuts. All right, ready? You want yeah. To it up a little bit or not? Let's check it out. This is going to be the angle. See that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that pretty good because I'm climbing down. So, all right, you guys ready? Here we go. I'm going to stay behind y'all. So that you guys can catch me when I'm rolling down. Yeah, that's gonna be great. All right, I found a little bit of like the trail kind of. So, is this the way, Todd, right here, or should we hook down here? We went down a lot earlier. Usually, we're further this way. There's a tra kind of okay. trail down that way. Should we follow you? We could go this straight one, down if you want. We don't have to be on a trail. I mean, look at the trail. There's, yeah, this I mean, is that's beyond the trail. Anyway. I mean, this is this is beyond the trail after all. Three years ago, we found a track about 18 and a half inches up there. No kidding. Up in this. It was slow. massive. So there's a down tree last year, and where the root ball fell, there's just all mud, right? So there's no debris. We found a nice track right in that mud, and there's a trail that comes down right there. But on our way down that trail, we found a spot where all these ferns 
were plucked and then all the leaves were pulled off in this weird little area. Hmm. I know Chris said deer eat fern, but I haven't looked in it at all. It was very strange. I haven't seen that before. Cause you, they were good size ones. They're pretty hard to pull out, but yeah. I don't know. It was just weird. We're checking it out. Huh. Huh? Fire ring. The tent used to be set up, the chair. The, the idea is you have a false camp set up and then that attracts maybe something thinking yeah. someone's camping in here. Hopefully, but nothing showed up except animals. Derek and Shane were talking about Trent, you know, you, you guys obviously started out more on the side of trail cameras and that was like the main primary purpose and now it's moved away. Is this yeah. something that would be something you'd be less likely to try now? I would try it, but I would enhance it. I talked to Shane about it. I had some ideas about doing the same kind of thing in the Sierras when I was in California and I was going to incorporate audio like a battery powered, like an MP3 speaker. I was going to play the sound of snoring with a lantern in the tent, that kind of situation. This may attract something that's passing by, but with the, with the sound of the light, I think it might attract something from even further away, especially night. You got the high ground here, right. so it's like they're going to be, be able to see that. Walk in the there. ridge. Yeah. And they might see the light and what the hell's down there nobody's in here at night we're like weekend warriors everybody yeah. has full-time jobs we don't get paid to do this it's on all our dime i pay for everything and i got teenage boys obviously i'm married i have all the other things in life that i deal with and this isn't this isn't my life this, this is a hobby priority. yeah <laughs> it costs a lot of money and time and I squeeze it in when I can but sure. sometimes I can't get out for like a month and I think that's the whole issue with this subject you have to be here every day every day every day every day like a job I think to get more accomplished there's no like Diane Fossey you know somebody who was living with gorillas for months or Jane Goodall with chimps there there is not that equivalent, no. equivalent for Sasquatch no. because nobody in that field really takes it as seriously i get so much crap from a lot of my friends i used to race with and people still make fun of me and talk all their crap and even guys at work but living here in washington there are guys at work that had experiences and and sometimes they won't talk about it in front of everybody but they'll tell you one-on-one -on -one. Yeah, on and i've had some crazy stories from guys at work right here in the olympics there's some guys, as soon as they find out I'm doing this, they're so into it. They tell me, oh, I was out hunting in this, or, you know, they're just really excited. Like, they, they I guess they feel like they can um, unload on you. They can, yeah, because, because it's like you can't talk you can't to the talk most people. About, even today, you can't talk about this with a lot of people. They think it's a joke. And this is, and we're in Washington where, I mean, there's the most amount of sightings I know. in databases, and it's the most culturally acceptable probably anywhere. I mean, look at this area. And who's exploring in here? Me, Chris, Shane, and Derek. You guys are the only people probably coming in here in years aside from that surveyor, right? It's like, we know there's more nests in here, but... It's just a matter of coming through it. It's crazy. We've spent so much time in here. And you just end up empty-handed at the end of the day a lot of times. Right. It's like a passion. Yeah. You know, I, I have points, obviously, where you're like super, super into it. And then you kind of get burned out and then you swing back into it, kind of get burned out, but it's always there. Our short hike to the bottom of the ravine was difficult to say the least. Between thick underbrush and a moist substrate, just finding footing was tough. The idea of a hoaxer coming this far off trail and constructing 20 or so nests in the hopes that someone might find it seemed highly unlikely. It's clear something is happening here. Live action. What's up? Welcome to my crib. My name is Seth Breedlove. This is my boy, Eli Watson. As the sun began to set, we decided to prepare for a night walk to see if we could stir anything up. Malfunction. Hi, I'm Cindy. So, anyways, you know, I was talking to Seth Breedlove, my good friend. Uh, in fact, we actually. <laughs> 100% Wait, say that again? This place is magic. Whoa. Uh, Chris has a long-term unit down here, a long-term audio unit he'd like to collect, but, and it's not that far off trail. That'd be a good small group. Yeah. And then we'll probably continue down here and split off, and we'll go 
it'll kind of tee off down here and we'll just go right and keep going. Yeah. I okay. want to go to the audio device for sure. Okay, then you're gonna want to, yeah, go with Chris. Yeah. Then I guess we'll go the opposite way, Alex. We got a, we got a handy cam here too. Are you not a big camper yourself? I'm not a huge one, no. Really? I have in the past, but no, I don't. Last time I camped was out in the Adirondacks with Steve Pauls and the, his group for On the Trail Bigfoot, the journey. Cindy and I, Cindy should tell them about the, the time we had out in the Tillamook Coast oh. as part of our research. Yeah, so it was, uh, how many years ago was that? Four years ago? About four years ago, It was yeah. in end of January, almost just right above freezing, pouring down rain like last night was nothing compared to, Impressive. it was just pouring down rain and we didn't expect anything to happen like usual. And um, I was sleeping in my truck and Shane had a tent and I think it was like three times he came and got me. He's like, hey, Cindy, come out here. I see something. And I go out, scan with the flare, nothing. I'm like, okay, whatever, Shane, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> that time I had a, it was a monocular, but I didn't record. I tried to put my right. phone up to it to record with my cell phone right, right. and it wasn't working, but that's all I said to myself. I need a witness. Someone needs to see this. I don't want to just have a story just for right, myself. Right. Yeah, of course. Shane kept on seeing stuff, but it would move. It would By move. The time I would come and out, it'd be that, a different spot. It moved in a different spot. So I think the third time I went out, I actually saw something and it looked like like a head, a little bit pointy on top, peeking around a tree like this. Oh, and, no and at the time I'm like, oh, you don't expect to see it. I'm like, it's a raccoon. He's like, no, it's not a raccoon. He's getting pissed <laughs> at me. And um, so I yelled at it after watching it for a while. And I said, hello. And I didn't tell Shane I was gonna do that. But when I did that, like the H sound gets out, just the and whatever it was, like dropped to the ground faster than I've seen anything ever move. And it actually startled me. That was a little bit um, shocking when that happened. And it was probably seven, seven and a half feet tall. It was either a naked man in the middle of January in freezing weather or a Sasquatch. Yeah. Like I think about a week after that, I would wake up and I'd almost have like, I don't want to say panic attacks, but like anxiety, like, wow. oh my God, this thing that we've been looking for might be real. And it was just a realization that, yeah, there could be something out there. And so were you on the fence before that or like, have you, I kind of still am just yeah, because sure. I haven't seen anything in the daylight. Um, and even though it was the shape of like a head and shoulders and body, um, I, we didn't still, I didn't see any detail, right. you know, so there's still that part of me that's like no are you kidding me no way <laughs> till we go down there's a pond down here oh, and then i know you guys are hungry no let's yeah i'm, okay. I'm fine with that cool. i mean as long as everyone else is cool with that and i was going to mention it then you guys um want to have a headlamps on feel free to do it i'm not a really that opposed to it i know a lot of people argue oh up your night vision, it does I don't need them. I don't need mine yet. No, I don't. My 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 nine bits will be shooting looking through this thing. But I mean, we're not we're not sneaking up on anything. Everything already knows we're here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little bit of a prima donna. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm recording. Did you get that on camera? I did. Oh, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, what a man. <laughs> What was that? I didn't quite hear that. It came from that way. Howl. Yeah, I did. I even heard it. Are they making noise? Why are they howling? Why would they? Chris knows better. Did you hear that? I heard something. Sound yeah. like a howl out yeah, there. Yeah, that's that's kind of. Do you of think it was Chris? I don't, I don't know why they would do that. We don't do that. It fucks up the audio. Unless Seth asked them to, but I don't think he would. Yeah. Interesting. What time is it so we can ask them? Well, 8.51. Well, we okay. got reported. We got that was, reported. Oh, I'm okay. just curious. That it sounded like it was off this way. Yeah, it did. There? Yeah, no, definitely. That way. Okay, good. Well, we got something, it, it was right? something. That was weird. What this fool just said? <laughs> you know what this guy Shane Corson just told me? What? About this pond? There's nutria here. No, there's that's not. What he, that's what he said. Don't underestimate the nutria. Wait, are you being, I, you're not being this serious. Is not the fire no, swamp. that's what he said. This is not the fire swamp. Though. Are you just, are you just pulling my leg here? No. Wait, what? Wait. That's, that's unreal. There's some down, down in Oregon. I'm scared of you too. <laughs> no, I'm, they're serious, dude. Is there anything else you guys want to do right now? I mean, we, we can continue hiking down here quite a ways. It goes for a long way. It gets thicker and thicker. Um, we can go to Taylor's house and shoot pool. Let's not do that. <laughs> That sounds like a good idea. Okay, ready? Shit down in my shirt, scratching me. Filmic? Right 
go. We know we're on that way. Here's a pro tip. Yeah, we're all the way down. Simple Truth Orange Juice, labeled vegan, was a dollar cheaper than the Simple Truth Orange Juice for non vegans. I think it was on sale today. Dude, just put your lips all over it. No, so what are we eating, my dude? All right, so we're gonna do some instant ramen, some hot water. We got the slow roast beef flavor. This is not usual camping food. I wouldn't advise this normally. We got some Cheetos hot, <laughs> flaming hot mac and cheese. We're not sponsored by any of these guys, but if Cheetos wants to sponsor us, I'd be happy to to oblige. Right, Fine, yeah, yeah. That work? Yeah, thank you so yeah, much. No that would be perfect. And then here's the lighter. Yeah, we just got this because we couldn't find ours. I think it went. No, maybe not. There you go. I think yeah. it's going. Okay. Oh, are we almost out of gas? Oh, maybe not. There you go. Oh, there we go. Thank you so much. Got a giant piss bottle if you need for a uh, <laughs> for a tent. That's the best. <laughs> so you don't have to get That's out. That's the move. And face the squash. My brother always does that with the Gatorade bottle. Me too. They do it for years. I got a Gatorade bottle empty by our tent right now. Might have to use your kombucha bottle. You know what I mean? Like. What? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> I know, I always win. I don't see a camera. What's going on there? Oh, I'm just taking a little nap. <laughs> Todd knows. He knows the thought. Todd is an aficionado. I mean, he knows every Bigfoot song out there. That's awesome. He's got a couple of his own, but they're kind of X-rated. <laughs> kind of X-rated. Oh, it's rock. They're like, yeah. I met a man. His name was Jim. <laughs> I would just build like a little bit of a TP. A little bit of It's got to breathe. Here's those real thin pieces. Yeah, those thin pieces, like Chris said. Look at the base of this tree right here. But that's not triangulation. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Boom. And then, yeah, get it going. This nice. is your this is your test of manhood. You just slow, you slow. Don't don't do it too I'm quick. I'm hiking out tonight. <laughs> oh yeah, you got it Let this time. It there, feed it with the small give stuff. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me that which I desire. Blow, blow it. Till, you can make it flame. Blow actually, it. keep going. You don't have to blow on it. Sometimes you just fan it. I think so. Yep. There you go, Chris. Oh, sick. A lot of people blow on top of it. You gotta blow from the side. Yep, we got a fire going, boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's not a boy. I said boys. That's All right, well, Eli's got his fire going. How did it feel? Just like Shane said, it's a mood Look, changer. Chris, it is a I was pick. in a bad mood all night, and now I'm... <laughs> Start. Yeah, you were like Oscar the Grouch. Yeah. And now, you're like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> and now it does feel good, though, especially in such a wet environment. Of course, the dry cedar helps a lot, but. Take your first apple. What are you eating, Chris? An apple? That's so good for you. Stiff <laughs> <laughs> and old, which oh, doesn't make sense, but. Oh, yeah, Sydney Cadell, but that's another funny story. This is the. <laughs> Sleeping setup. I think Eli's in there. So it was a chilly night. Not much going on. Getting ready to pack up camp though and head up and meet with Seth and the rest of the group. Had an audio recorder out in here last night. We had audio recorders basically all around us, but there was an owl, not a whole lot else going on. I have to review the audio. A lot of gear. This is how you pack mule stuff out of here. Sleeping bags, stuff hanging. Oh, God. <sighs> Sweating like a pig with my jacket on, my thermal shirt underneath my sweatshirt. We packed up camp and followed the Olympic project to a nearby ravine. While it was a few miles ride by car, the area of our search was not far downstream from the nests. 
considering their previous luck with finding nests nearby, the goal was to find signs of any potential nests or nest making. Chris is always hungry. <laughs> Yeah, I've got some pretty cool pictures. I like putting them down low because on these trails, you got a better chance of catching a bobcat, coyote, bear, or cougar mm. and stuff. But I always, inevitably, a mouse or something finds it and crawls around on it. <laughs> Eli, this is a bear track. It's a bear track here. She's doing some amazing hey, guys, watch out for the devil's club up here. Yeah. Don't grab it. Okay. It gets infected and festers really shitty. You said it's called Devil's Claw? Club. Club. Club, oh, okay. Devil's Club, what is that? Uh, unfortunately you'll know it the first time you do come across oh. it. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice big long, tall, uh, <laughs> plant with huge thorns on it. It's big, it's awesome. The puking, he goes. But. Rebecca. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> Shed hunting. That's sweet. Yeah. That's pretty good to go find. I have yet to find. So, did you want to take, were we going to search each side of the ravine or were you? Yeah, well, I think things on that. Chris is up here. Okay. So, whatever you feel like doing. Should I hit up by Chris kind of get extra eyes or? That wouldn't hurt. Okay. <laughs> So we got some breaks. Yeah, those are interesting. Can't rule. Oh, here's another one. See, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I see. But this right here, yeah. Now, this is probably two weeks old. Same here, but that right here. Get a broken off branch straight ahead. Here. Right here? Yeah. Oh, wow. Here's a call. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's a good one. Yeah, take some strength. You know what I shouldn't be doing? I'm sure there's no hair on there, but I always look for hair. I don't have my reading left. But it's kind of old, but this is this is interesting. You got these. Keep finding all this orange. Right That's all we... the surveyors take. Yeah. yeah. Edge of the boundary. So we're in loggers territory then? Yeah. So just over the rise, you can see where the trees all open up to the sky. Yeah. That's where it's cut, and they have to leave a buffer of so far between the creek and the slope and everything else. So you'll see the orange surveyor's tape, and that marks uh, oh. the edge of their their boundary. Is Shane up high? <clears throat> we were up here. Uh huh. Came off that ridge. There's something you want to check out up there. We found a bunch of huckleberry breaks in one spot back up here. Okay, we found one up top, but that was it. One break? One break. That, yeah, we had a, an area. Yeah. Like from here on, it got a lot like the nest area. Okay. Got a lot higher and thicker. We ran into an area that had been logged, oh. so I think that's what some of the breakage was up here. Was yeah. It was surveyor's tape was nearby, so kind of got to rule that out. There's game trails up there. It's really flat, and everything's only about this high. You can see a long way. Okay. So we're just like, yeah, this isn't really like the area, but another hundred yards changed real fast. Nah, I love areas like this. This is like such a vantage point because you got the way the, the water forks out and you got this like almost like this little individual peninsula, little island right here. Yeah, I don't see any breaks. 
brakes or anything like that, but we'll go back a little bit further. Typical. It's probably not, not with this jut now, but it's, it's got that look to it. Yeah, it definitely it, does. But into the exact where I expect to see something walking up, so that's just most likely not. Hmm. Watch. Yeah. Hard to say that one. But here's another kind of large impression right here. It's something. We're right here. I'm, I'm heading down. All right, so right now we're down in this ravine area, which is really amazing. There are these two huge ridges basically on either side, right behind me and on the other side over here. And so um, some of the OP members were saying that these are the kind of areas where they find the nests up on the ridge line and kind of the fingers where there's like almost a little finger that sticks out from the ridge itself. We found one up here, Shane and I walked, where there was like a game trail going right around it where you can tell animals have been going there. But um, yeah, it's just really interesting. Now, how's it been for you, Eli, walking the... There's actually logging just on, on the top of this ridge here. So we actually found uh, the surveyor's tape that marks the, the boundary. If anything's gonna be here, it's gonna be on that side, I think. While we couldn't find anything concrete, the area was vast enough that something easily could have escaped our attention. After a grueling search with minimal results, Eli and I hit the road, going to stay with the rest of the crew for a much needed night indoors. Alright, so Eli and I have rescued a dog that was just hanging out on the road. How you doing buddy? You good boy? You're a good boy, right? We just, uh, we're gonna drive around maybe in some of these houses and see if anybody knows whose dog this, this is. Yeah, there's a house here. Here you go, buddy. Some jerky? Yeah, good boy, good boy. We'll find your owners. So as I said, we, uh, we were just driving around, getting out here, and we came across this dog just wandering the road, just running around, and he was friendly enough. We gave him some jerky, and he's hanging out with us, and we're trying to find his home, but you know we're not having much luck so far, so I think we might have to take him to, to town here and maybe find a pound or something and kind of see what's going on. Yeah. He's a good boy though, he's just hanging out. So we'll see what happens. I suppose. Here you go, buddy. You want some? Yeah. Oh, that's so good, huh? Yeah. Oh, I was hungry, boy. Dude, he scarfed that down. Hey, man. Buddy. Come here, boy. Come here, dude. Hey. So, Reggie, as he has become <laughs> known, he left the car. Yeah, he was acting really weird. He was acting like a stray dog. I mean, he scarfed down the chicken that we gave him and, um, he just was walking around, peeing on everything. He was acting like a stray dog. I mean, yeah, it just, either that or he was just like sick or something because he was just being really weird. Yeah, he had a limp, so that's why we didn't really want to leave him. And if he was out in, in the woods where we found him, he would have been mountain lion food. So yeah. we, we did, we made some calls and he actually ended up jumping into some guy's car and the guy knows people in the area and he's gonna talk to them about taking him in, so. I think it's a win-win. You know, we're not from here, so we're not we're not going to be here that right. long. So it's he's out of our hands. Hopefully, he'll be in better hands. So we wish him the best. Yeah, hopefully, you know. And Reggie, if you're watching this, you know, <laughs> we miss you, dude. What's up? We out here chilling in my new beach house. But we about to go catch some oysters. This is not so. Yeah, the best ones. Inside? These are oysters. They're a pain in the butt. Right. Well, if I this should, it. yeah, yes, here. Oh no, be careful. It should bust this little side. And break your hand. Bust off. Yeah, try to smash it. Yeah, that worked. Oh, wow. So what is that? That's just the oyster. Salty a little bit. Sea booger. After you kind of busted them open. So there's oysters well, yeah. everywhere here, huh? Oh, he's just gonna eat it, huh? 
just a little bit because he's kind of got some shell in there. Oh, that's not. So look at it. Sasquatch protein. Here. That night, Seth and a few members of the crew joined us on another night hike in the nest area. With our campsite now packed away, we wanted to come in on foot and see if anything had come by in our absence. How are you feeling? Good. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Ready to go. All right, so we got the Zoom audio recorder. A little clip here. <laughs> clip it right on. That way, just audio is rolling. It's a big one, too. <laughs> Give a die. You guys want to stop for a second? See what that is. What? Is that? There's howling off to the right. Okay. Audio recorder is now rolling. Oh, that's not audio. Oh, it's that dang Those dog are dogs. again. That's not the dogs, dude. That's like a, that's either coyote or owl. It's not a barred owl. It's not the dog. It might be. I don't know. I don't know some of the other owls calls in here. I don't know if it, it's definitely not a barred owl. I've heard those a million times. There's other types. They said they heard a horned owl. Yeah, they said they heard a horned owl last night. I don't know what that sounds like. I've heard a great horned owl at, at Whitehall, but I can't remember what the difference is. That's not a dog. No. That might be a coyote. sound pretty close. Coyotes can do this thing where like a few coyotes will start yipping and it sounds like there's like 20 of them. They'll change their pitch so it makes it sound like there's more of them. Hmm. Now it's done. It just got really quiet. I mean, it was like an off switch. It was crazy. Like yeah. just the, the bugs just. Whoosh. But the frog stopped too, and now they started back up. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be something moving in there. This side just kept going, so whatever's moving is probably down that way, right? And that's also the direction of that weird whistle thing we heard earlier. All right, so right now we're driving through the Olympic Peninsula. We've got Grays Harbor kind of towards the south where you've had those famous casts taken. So we just passed uh, the town of Port Angeles right in the Olympic Peninsula. What's really cool is across 
the uh, the water, you can actually see Vancouver Island, yeah. which is called Ape Island. It's really interesting. I mean, you have the Olympic Peninsula, Vancouver Island that are super close to each other. And these are some of the top places for Sasquatch on the planet. Yeah. Uh, similar environments, the rainforest, similar terrain. Uh, it's just amazing. That's in another country. Would love to check that out though. Yeah, it's uh, definitely plenty of environment for them to live in. So right now we're in the Ho Rainforest National Park. Met up with my buddy Jake, who's in the Air Force Station down here. Crazy story, met him at a Best Buy. And uh, we hung out in Colorado. We've just hung out since then, and this is my first time seeing you in a while. So yeah. it's pretty awesome to have you along, man. What do you think about Washington so far? This place is beautiful. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Like spots like this are just like, you're never gonna find it anywhere else in the, in the country, so. Yeah, so he's gonna tag along with us today and uh, pretty awesome area. I mean, it's obviously not raining now, but it's still still pretty cool to see. So we're gonna kind of make our way through here. Sick. Absolutely unreal looking forest. This place is crazy. Tucked away in the mountains, the Olympic Project headquarters is a single building known as the Cabin. While there, we also got to meet other Olympic Project members, including David Ellis, Isaac Tian, and Mark Marcel. Sasquatch evidence and pop culture references adorn the walls, making this any Bigfooter's dream. While not all the casts of the cabin are originals, some of them are. Some of them were even found at the nests, including a handprint that was found where Shane and Todd had stumbled upon something building a nest. James Million of the Olympic Project went down to see where this thing had circled around us. He wanted to see if there was a tracks, a trail, and after about 40 minutes of hiking in this area, just searching, he found this right where we basically think this thing started to uh, ascend the hill. Um, there was two hand impressions, this being obviously um, the left, and there was a left and a right. And this was the better of the two, but it was clear. And then were the two hand impressions were spread out about 40 inches. Yep. Basically, what we're looking at is you got a game trail down below where this thing must have walked, and then you have a hill and there's a large, large fallen log. And it was behind the log and you had a hand impression, hand impression, just like this. But that log kind of shielded it from our vantage point, so we would never have seen it. Going down from where the handprints were, there was a path of destruction up through the ferns. You could clearly see. Shane then guided us into the hills surrounding the cabin to show us some of the terrain that make it so easy for these creatures to hide. This clear cut over here, David Ellis was call blasting whale calls up the mountain. Wait, like whale calls in the, like the animal whales or like yeah, whaling? Yeah, no, like a whale, actual whale. Mouth. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We were um, up on this, there's a road over here, dirt road. We were fleering down below. About an hour into it, we get two individuals standing just over here that come into the, come into the frame. One is massive and then there's a smaller one. There's two groups. We got David Ellis and his group, and then we got us up top, and we're flaring. Derek and I both have flares. 
he catches these two individuals come down one does this and then the smaller one circles up behind it and goes and disappears and then the larger one takes off as well we did a recreation and that thing had to been we got a, a guy come in and he's uh, about six three and he was the, the size of the smaller one wow so the other one had the the big guy had to be it was huge but it was about 300 yards away so it's not perfect but you can bipedal figure it's claw Oh, neat. He they wouldn't take a horse. The bear was just would they? crossing here. I mean, it would. It's almost like a cider. It's something, someone's kicked that up or scraped it up. I'm, yeah. I'm guessing it's a scrape, but why? It's cool. So it's he got same pattern. One, yeah, look at that. Two. Uh, there's nothing scraped there, so it's not a. Well, you can see little almost scapes here. Yeah. yeah. I think we're looking at cat, maybe. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's probably yeah. it's bobcat. Are you thinking? No, no, it's. Bear? Bear probably I wouldn't, but I wouldn't pass away cougar. I don't know. That. It's most likely bear though. Just that's like weird. That's the second time. Yeah. Second, so I mean, you can flashlight. see almost like yeah. slightly some sort of little claw marks. I don't know. Maybe that's just the. No, I kind of looks. There's definitely. It looks like one right there, right in the middle. The definition. Yeah. You can really see it from this angle too, because the sun's coming in. Right in there. Yeah. Huh. It might be cat because it. it, it the, the width, there's nothing going on here, so it's not like a big paw. Yeah. They use their, cattle use their hind, hind paws to pick that back, so yeah. that might explain why it's so wide. Yeah, we might be following a cougar. Third. Wow, that's just the third in a row. Uh oh, oh, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I'm pretty sure. Another one? Yeah. I thought I got a whip, so I could be wrong. No, it's it's more than earthy, so there's something in I'm thinking. It could be a large bobcat. I can't rule that out, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. You know there. what? There is a slight ammonia. Yeah, that's, that's what I that's, thought. That's cat. You're going to have a... a cat this. My poor dusty gun. I got to oil this poor baby. Oh, man. All right. So this is number number four, four. here we found in a row. Yeah. Same side. Yeah. Having number seven. Jeez. And it's going up here. Yes. So a young mountain, probably young male mountain lion, huh? Because right they can get a lot bigger. Than yeah. That. Oh yeah. Pretty crazy. The old market. But it's open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at that rock there. That's where we're going. That's called the House Rock. Yeah, we're filed for Rock House. House Rock. This was. We got up here. Wow. And there was another one here, but it looked like a hand. Huh. See how it got smushed down here? You can't see it now. This is back in November. I'm just surprised it still looks like that. Like a scrape almost. Yeah. Now. It was like something tried to jump up and came down. We were just going, what the heck? And so maybe when we back down, we'll, we'll, I'll show you down here, but... Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at this. Oh, in there. Wow. We'll go down in there, maybe. Oh, look at this. I've actually climbed, well, on the back side, I climbed the top and GoPro down. Do people rock climb this, or yeah, probably not, no. not a great spot for it? No, no. I'll go down, I'll get out of the way for you here. Get night mode on. Oh, sick. Oh, that is a tight squeeze. Oh, it's not that bad, actually. Not too bad? We're in a little, little crevasse here. There's one little crack here where you can see the light coming through. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even try to get deep in there. Yeah, so here we are. We're in this. Uh, the rock closes on us and we're stuck. Uh, and we have to go. And we end up in. Help. Uh, oh. What a cool spot. Yeah, it's so nice down there. It's nice and cool. Mm -hmm. So there's it. You gotta get the rope swing. Oh no! You're doing it again? Yeah, I'm going again. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> now I got some people to jump with. You guys ready?
All right, so we're about to head up to the campsite for tonight where we found the fresh mountain lion print. We're gonna cast that, but we're heading up in the side-by-side, -side, just make it a little bit easier to get up there, so. Everybody getting all buckled in and ready? Not yet. Alright, so we're about to head up from base camp here to the area where we found that cougar print earlier. They might already be casting it, so hopefully we'll be able to see some of that, but because we were following a mountain line earlier, we're going to put one in the chamber. Alright, let's do it. Be nuts. So you're going to measure it? Yeah, I like to get some pictures for scale just so that once you pull it, you kind of have a little bit of a storyline behind it. Absolutely. Oh, so Plaster, Plaster Paris, Paris was like the one that's, thing that they started with. Yeah, that's what she's using right now. That's why so many of the it's, old tracks crumbled and just disintegrated yeah, if they really. were kept properly. We use it because it's cheap and easy to come by. And yeah. So like when we're casting stuff like that. I saved the hydrocal. If we find it, something we think is legit, I'll yeah. we'll use the hydrocal. Because that's what I used to do to repair like old, older homes and stuff was plaster of Paris. So it's cool to see it used in this manner. First time I've ever seen a mountain lion track in the wild. And especially after having spending almost two years doing a project about mountain lions. Really? In, in the East Coast. Yeah. And like talking to biologists and seeing them in person, like in captivity and finding one in the wild and knowing that there's one here for me is like a big personal victory. Yeah, and you don't see that very often up here. You, we got a lot of cougar on cam up here, a lot of cougars. Yeah, yeah finding cougar tracks is just about as rare yeah. as <laughs> finding it, a lion cougar. It really is, and that's what's so, <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah, I can't get over it. You know how awesome this weather is right now? Dude, and especially for it's always audio. Raining up here. I know. Every time we camp here, I think nine times out of 10, it's pouring rain. <laughs> that's what I was telling them. We deal with the weather so much here with the rain and the like wind. Tree. Like this is like not hard perfect. to motivate people to get up here. Like I was saying, down here, I was camping up here. I didn't hear in person. It's like two and three in the morning. You heard, uh, I got it recorded. It's, it's, you hear sticks breaking something, walking, you hear. Oh, you're talking oh, oh yeah, I got it recorded. Just, for, and it was up on this hill. Wow. Really cool is if you look at the, on Sonic Visualizer, if you look at that chest flap, it is, it's so similar to a gorilla chest flap. This is, this is really cool because it's actually a, a really clear nine. You can actually yeah. see the stars. Here we go. Yeah. Can you swing it harder? Dude, I've been swinging hard since 1976. <laughs> You're ready, boy. You're ready, boy. Do we have auto rolling? It was actually dry enough and hard enough to make some noise. Usually, you pick sticks up here, and they're so rotten they just like. Why <laughs> did I only Sasquatch does wood knocks as far as they? I think they use rocks more. Rocks on a tree or. You can't break them. You smash it, yeah. And then we get metallic sounds, yeah, which I can't weird. explain. We're in the woods. What's metallic? Right. Hmm. We've all recorded it. Jumping. It's like, so. bing. You know, yeah. like, what in the hell? Well, didn't Ron Moorhead say with the Sierra sounds they had like weird stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Car doors. Yeah. Like I've heard you know. plenty of people, even Cliff, talking about the car door sound, like a car door slamming. I mean, I, hopefully Seth talked to him about David Elspeth, but David Elspeth's got amazing recordings from yeah. all around the country. Sorry. And it's, I don't know if it's Sasquatch. Some people but say it's, some it's Sasquatch stuff. mimicking stuff where you hear almost like a chainsaw or a weed eater or a, a car engine or a door slam or, I mean, I don't know what that is. I don't know, I didn't see a Sasquatch do it, but it's weird in areas that we research. I've right. never, I've heard metallic sounds, but I've never heard that stuff in person, recorded it. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. A lot of activity that happens up here is, I mean, it's like, after like the one o'clock, two o'clock hour. Yeah. And then it stops about four or five, if you have anything happen at all. Right. But yeah. 
you just a lot of weird stuff happens out here and allow you ever mm. i mean i don't want to get like because i'm not really into the paranormal no stuff, no go ahead yeah but like have you ever experienced any orbs or any any of that kind of stuff no nope. like the, the funny thing about orbs is there's so many dip misidentifications we we brought an expedition out here one time not this trail the trail i took you on today yeah and we're way down and we're not quite the fouls rock and there's something glowing in the woods and some one of the uh ex partakers in the expedition pointed out and it was glowing it was glowing mm -hmm. in the woods no right. i mean it looked like an orb and i'm like well that is odd that is odd well we filmed it and then i said well let's go check it out let's not yeah. just like oh that's an orb went and checked mm -hmm. it out it was a long hike way down get down to the base of the tree and i lost i'm like oh where to go and i finally found it looking up it's fun it was a it was a mushroom it was a fungal growth <laughs> on them it, but it glowed in the dark it's called that's firefox amazing. i think it's called i think it's called firefox wow. if i'm not mistaken oh, yeah. but it was glowing it looked like an orb that's, up in the tree crazy. up high mm -hmm. and i'm not discounting it you no, know of course. there, there are, i think people generally do see some orbs or whatever but this was explained as i mean it's, we did our investigation we, yeah. we sought it out figured it out that and i didn't know what i was looking at at the time i knew it was some sort of fungal growth after research, I believe it was called Firefox. That's amazing. So yeah, I mean, it, a lot of stuff, I mean, lights shine in different ways. It's My biggest issue with orbs in general is this. Why are they associated with Sasquatch? Right. Because you're in the woods and you see a light? So yeah. obviously, because you're, you're actually out there investigating Sasquatch, all of a sudden you see an orb or a light. Right. Well, oh, Sasquatch and orbs. Yeah, I'm setting up a uh, trail camera on an intersection of trails here uh, right up here at this one intersection we found a marking a uh, scent marking from a mountain lion and then further down we found mountain lion tracks so the idea here is to get this low enough that it'll be triggered easily Hopefully catch something coming down here. Right on. So we have uh, been having a pretty quiet night up here. It's been actually insanely quiet. I mean, you can hear a pin drop. We've been doing some flurrying and kind of all hanging out in the campsite. But even Shane and some of the other members are saying that it's never this quiet here. That's kind of unusual. I'm really hoping once we all kind of settle in, we're hoping to settle into bed here soon and just listen for a while, have the audio running and just see what can happen or won't happen. So what's the technique there that you're using? Well, yeah, so I like to, what I like to do is you have a, if you have a camp, like set up like we have tonight, I like to peel away from the camp and flare around the camp and around the area, see if anything's kind of maybe peeking or watching. Camp itself. What's up? <laughs> Feel this. It's like it's still it's still soft because I have to cure it. Yeah, right. But it definitely feels. But I think the I other ones like you could just feel. There we go. <laughs> nice. So we had an eerily quiet night here last night. Just absolutely nothing going on. Eli and I are going to head out now. Very quiet. Alright, so looks like the trip is coming to a close here. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just been absolutely unreal. I, I, so memorable, just being out there in the field with the OP, seeing how real these guys are, and you know, just seeing the sites they're in, they're working in. Mm. Unreal. I mean, difficult, hard to get to. You need to have extreme motivation just to get into some of these places. Yeah, I think we've done some hardcore camping, you know, and uh, d definitely stuff that normal people don't do. As you've said multiple times during this uh, episode, I think 
the the lengths you would have to go to to hoax this stuff is just astronomical. A astronomical for sure. Like, I mean, the whole point of a hoax is that someone's gonna discover it and believe it, right? And these nests are so hidden away. You know, it's absolutely pure chance and luck right. that they discovered it. So, well, weather-wise, I mean, we lucked out completely. That, but. <laughs> Most of the time, there's downpouring rain, and it's just not pleasant conditions. So add that on top of the motivation of going into some of these difficult areas. Mm -hmm. Just everything stacked on top of it. And as you mentioned, the possibility of a hoax, I think, is just extremely unlikely, in my opinion. It's just I'm hooked. Right. So between the views and just everything, running into that mountain lion, being basically on the heels of the mountain lion, especially as somebody so interested in mountain lions, right. amazing experience. That for me was a highlight. Right. And just everything else, all in all, trip of a lifetime. Absolutely, yeah. After our time in Washington, it was easy to see why this state has more sightings than just about any other in the country. The terrain of the Olympic Peninsula is rugged, complete with dips and rises that make traversing quite difficult, and only few are willing to brave it. There is no other group quite like the Olympic Project. From the research methods to the camaraderie, the OP is not the typical Bigfoot research group, and their results seem to speak for that. With that said, we'll have to join the Olympic Project in the future for another journey beyond the trail.